Every day, 52,000 ships sail the sea and get one thing from one location to the next. A protein that acts very much like a cargo ship. And my protein of interest is the protein kinesin. Well, what does kinesin do? And how does its structure affect its function? Moreover, how does kinesin's function affect human physiology? Well, let's jump right in. Molecules can enter the cell through different means, such as simple diffusion down a concentration gradient, through facilitated transport, such as glucose entering the cell by gluts, or active transport, which involves going against a concentration gradient, with ATP as a cost. But how do larger things get around a cell? Well, we can answer that by looking at motor proteins, such as kinesin. Kinesins carry cargo towards the positive end of the microtubule. Going back to the cargo analogy, they are the pirates of the cell. Kinesin has a globular tail in its carboxyl terminus, which carries cargo such as organelles or vesicles, and a stalk that contains hinges or kinks for flexibility. The stalk, which is made of coiled coils, connects the tail to the heads or the motor domains, where most of the action in kinesin occurs. The heads hydrolyze ATP and allow kinesin to walk down the microtubule as so. Kinesin walks down the microtubule in a processive manner, which basically just means that it moves its motor domains, one in front of the other, down the microtubule. You can think of it kind of like a DUI test. As I mentioned earlier, the part of kinesin that's responsible for its movement down a microtubule is the motor domain or head. Let's further discuss the structure of the motor domain. The motor domain's a dimer, with each monomer composed of 370 amino acids, 320 of which have been conserved, are also seen in myosin, an actin-based motor. Thus, when we compare the structures of kinesin and myosin, we see that they are very similar, which means they are likely to have a similar evolutionary past. Each monomer of the motor domain is made from a central seven-stranded beta sheet between two groups of three alpha helices each. The motor is connected by a flexible linker to a 50 amino acid long alpha helix that forms the dimerization domain of kinesin. The dimerization domain is believed to unzip slightly in the motion of kinesin. Let's take a quick look of the structural changes of kinesin during its movement. In solution, both kinesin heads contain tightly bound ADP and move randomly, driven by Brownian motion. When one of the two kinesin heads encounters a microtubule, it binds tightly. Microtubule binding causes ADP to be released from the attached head. ATP then rapidly enters the empty nucleotide binding site. This nucleotide exchange triggers the neck linker to zipper onto the catalytic core. This action throws the second head forward and brings it near the next binding site on the microtubule. The attached trailing head hydrolyzes the ATP and releases phosphate. As the neck linker unzippers from the trailing head, the leading head exchanges its nucleotide and zippers its neck linker onto the catalytic core, and the cycle repeats. Let's do a quick summary. One of the heads of the motor domain, or the catalytic core, binds to the beta subunit of a microtubule. That same head binds ATP. The other head swings forward, binds to the microtubule, and releases ADP. On the original head, ATP is hydrolyzed, an inorganic phosphate is released, and the head is detached from the microtubule, and the process repeats. Let's discuss the structural changes of kinesin during its movement. So this is kinesin's binding pocket for ATP. It contains several serine, threonine, and asparginine residues. The pocket allows for ADP binding to Mg2+. In the presence of ATP, kinesin's microtubule binding regions L8, L12, L11, alpha-4, alpha-5, and alpha-6 undergo a conformational change leading to a change in affinity of kinesin to the microtubule. The nucleotide pocket of kinesin has sequence homology to a class of proteins known as G-proteins. These switch between a tight and a loose conformation depending on the nucleotide state. In the switch between a tight and loose conformation and G-proteins, two loops, switch 1 and switch 2, undergo a conformational change. These are also in kinesin. 
If we look at the diagram here, we can see that the hydrolysis of ATP results in a conformational change of switch 1 and switch 2. Furthermore, we can get a better look here. Let's look at the two structures of kinesin. On the left, there's kinesin before the power stroke, and on the right, it's kinesin after the power stroke. In these two figures, the ATP binding pocket is shown in blue. The cavity changes conformation as ATPs hydrolyze and an inorganic phosphate is dissociated. The small change pushes on the relay helix, shown in green. This creates a pocket for the neck linker, shown in yellow. Before the power stroke, the pocket for the linker is too small and the linker is flexible and disordered. But after, the pocket is the right size and the linker zippers and drags along the neck and carries any cargo that it's carrying. The switch between these two states explains the zippering motion of kinesin or the processive motion of kinesin down the microtubule. Kinetics, what does kinetics have to do with kinesin? Well, after all, kinesin is an enzyme that hydrolyzes ATP. The binding of kinesin to the microtubule generates a rapid equilibrium between two conformations, with the rate of formation as shown. Each step along the microtubule generates around 6 to 8 piconewtons of energy. So kinesin is an enzyme that hydrolyzes ATP and moves down a microtubule. But how far does kinesin travel? Well, let's think about putting kinesin and a car in a boxing match. Who would win? Or who would travel farther? Well, kinesin travels 3.6 centimeters per hour in contrast to a car, which travels 1.2 times 10 to the 5th meters per hour. So a car travels much, much farther per unit time. So is kinesin really not that efficient? Well, when we take into consideration of the lengths of the two, we find that kinesin travels much farther than a car. Kinesin travels 3.6 times 10 to the 5th of its own length per hour, and a car travels 1.2 times 10 to the 5th of its own length per hour. So that means that kinesin travels much farther per length and is probably going faster than your car on a highway. So we get it, we get it. Kinesin's a pretty cool protein. But what happens when things go south? Kinesin is involved in vesicle and organelle transport and transports vesicles to the presynaptic region of axons to mediate synaptic transmission. So mutants can lead to paralysis, lethality, vesicle jams, and degenerative neurological disorders. Kinesin also plays a role in cell division by assembling spindles, separating centromeres, and attaching chromosomes to spindles. It's required for meiosis and mitosis. Any problems can lead to female sterility or cell cycle rest. Nowadays, everyone is trying to find the cure for cancer. In cancer research, they use tubulin inhibiting drugs that disrupt the dynamic of microtubules. But tubulin's important for a wide array of functions, so even at low levels, it's toxic. However, there are kinesins that exist that are specific to just mitosis, called mitotic kinesins. Those offer lower toxicity than tubulin inhibiting drugs, and they have a possibility of fighting cancer. So, who knows? Maybe kinesins are the answer to curing cancer. If you've made it to this point, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.